Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we are looking at a 2016 Nissan Altima. We're going to be replacing the front pads and rotors on this vehicle. The part number is going to be the same for the caliper and the bracket for these vehicles. The 2002 to 2018 Nissan Altima, the 2003 to 2019 Nissan Maxima, and the 2013 to 2017 Nissan Leaf. So if this video helps you out on any of those vehicles, make sure you comment below with the year, make and model of the vehicle that this video helped you on. Real quick, first, let's just take a look at what we're going to be working on, touching and removing, which is the brake caliper and the bracket to remove the bolt, sorry, the rotor. Uh, we need to remove the bolts to remove the caliper to remove the rotor. First, make sure everything is intact. Uh, you don't want to run into any problems later, so if you see any leaks on the boots or on maybe your CV shaft or something, this might be the time to take uh, a, attention or note of that and fix that while you're here. Also, take in consideration where your wear indicators are at on the inboard or outboard pad and the top or the bottom side of the caliber. So just make sure you have everything well noted. One thing I like to do when I am doing my brake jobs is to take my phone out and take lots of pictures. Take a picture of the front, the back, up close, far away. Take pictures of everything, just in case you get to a spot in the reassembly process and forget where something goes. Also, make sure you check out Scotty's Auto Talk on Spotify and other podcast uh, formats. You could call in, ask questions, set you up a date, uh, and we'll try to work through something that you're working on. Again, back to this 2016 Nissan Altima. To remove the caliper, we need to remove these 14 millimeter bolts that hold your slider pin or hold your caliper to your slider pin. These should be pretty soft. If you need, well you might like I did in this case, is use a, a croissant wrench, a crescent wrench to hold the slider pin while you turn that 14 millimeter bolt. Here is the caliper. We are gonna be compressing the piston back into the caliper later on in this video. Let's go ahead and tie it up to the shock and the spring right here using a 6.22 millimeter on a half inch breaker bar. Gonna remove both of the bolts holding the caliper bracket onto the spindle. When you reinstall these later, make sure you use proper torque specifications. And I will go over that in this video during installation. Now that my caliper bracket is loosened up, before I go much further, I'm going to take some more pictures of this disassembly process. So if I run into an area when I get confused or where I get confused during the reassembly process, I have pictures of everything. Make sure you take note of where your wear indicators are placed so you make sure they're in the same area or in the same spot when you put your new pads on. Make sure you check me out on Spotify as well. If you have any automotive questions, you can hit me up on the Scotty's Auto Talk hotline. We could schedule an appointment for you to call and ask questions. But check me out on Spotify. Remove the upper and lower bolts holding the caliper bracket to the spindle. Your caliper bracket will fall right off. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share while you're watching this video as well. Don't forget to comment below with the year, make, and model of the vehicle that this helped you on. Let's drag the rotor off of the spindle as well. Now, I'm going to make sure all the parts that I have to replace my old parts with match up to what I have uh, sitting around. So the pads I take off, I'm going to make sure they look exactly like the pads I'm going to put on. I don't want to get too far into a spot to where uh, I'm stuck and I can't do anything with the vehicle. So just make sure everything is matching up right now. You'd rather go get the parts right now than rather when uh, it won't fit into the caliper housing when you're doing the reassembly process. So first you need to remove the slider pins. Clean these off really well. I'm gonna use a brake clean. Spray a little bit onto the cloth and then wipe off the slider pins. If your slider pins are warped or pitted or there's something wrong with them, you might need to replace those or the caliper bracket itself might go bad or might be bad if your uh, slider pin is seized in there. So take that to, oh, sorry, Take that into consideration 
uh, if you do run into that problem. If you have a seized pin or you can't clean it up, you might need to replace the uh, bracket as well. But do your best to get your slider pin really clean. We're going to lube it up with some disc brake lube. You will find links in the description below to purchase those. So make sure you check those out, please. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share too. Make sure you comment below with the year, make, and model of the vehicle that this helped you on. Here I'm using my disc brake lube. I'm going to put it on pretty liberal, but not too, too much. Enough to where it's going to squirt out of the boots. Just enough to where when I push it into the bracket, it'll bounce up and down or push in and out without any uh, friction and it does it really freely. Make sure you inspect your boots at this point too. If your caliper boots are ripped right there or bracket bolts are ripped right there, this would be a great time to replace them. So take a look at everything. Just make sure it looks good. That's something else that you want to look at when you're taking those pictures earlier in the video too. Take a look and make sure you have everything that needs to be replaced. You might need a hose. You might have a leak somewhere that needs to be replaced or fixed while you're uh, in here instead of doing the job twice. Remove the brake pads. These ones have a weird little spring on the side of them. That kind of confused me. I thought that was wear indicator, but putting it back together, I noticed that they, they all had it. It's to push the brake pad off of the road or when you let go of the brake on the sides of these pads. Again, match everything up. Make sure it looks pretty similar. It actually should look the same. I always recommend you get brakes with a hardware kit. You always want those retaining pins or those vibration absorbers. Uh, I always replace them, I would say. So get those every time you do this job. Now that we have the caliper bracket reassembled and ready to go, let's focus on the rotor. I always like to clean the surface or the friction surface areas of my rotor before I install a new rotor. In case there's like any wax or I don't know what they would put on it, but what for shelf life to make it last longer, they put some type of liquid on it, I think, in the plastic bag. So make sure you remove that before you install your rotor. I'm using brake clean to do that as well. I always clean the outboard side first and then I'll clean the inboard side. Because you'll see the inboard side was sitting flat on the ground. Now the outboard side is on the hub area, so it's not on the ground. So it's keeping that bottom side clean at this time. So I always clean the outside off first. Make sure you get it nice and clean, everything off. You'll see a little residue. It'll come right off. It won't take too much oomph. Install the rotor. It doesn't matter where or how in this case, as long as it's on all the lug nuts. I will use a lug nut or two to hold the rotor in place while I am reassembling everything. So that's one thing that might help you out. Make sure you keep one of those lug nuts pretty close by to hold the rotor on. So you don't have to hold it or balance the rotor and try to get everything to fit on when you're trying to get the bracket to line up. It'll make it a lot easier in this case. So make sure you do that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share while we are watch. Grab your caliper bracket and the bolts to install it. It doesn't matter in which uh, direction or which bolt you put in first or tighten first in this case. Just make sure you get both bolts put back in. Using a 22 millimeter six point socket on a torque wrench, I'm going to torque these bolts down to 98 foot pounds. Make sure you get a good three clicks out of it. I don't like to get one click. I'll go to three good steady clicks out of each bolt before I move on to the next. And again, torque sequence is not too important in this case. Just make sure they're properly torqued down. You can see nice, good, firm grip on the torque wrench. It's not bent in either direction. Get a good three clicks out of it. Install each pad. It doesn't matter which pad you install first. Just make sure they are installed properly. Make sure the spring is in the same direction it was when you removed it and your wear indicator is in the proper area as well. Inboard and outboard pads, it doesn't matter. Just make sure they're both in before you move on to the next process. I like to squeeze them both really tight before I move on or uh, put my uh, caliper on. Now we need to open the cap on the brake fluid reservoir so you won't have any extra fluid bust any seals or anything it'll just leak out right here on the floor and won't be too worried about it grab your brake caliper it's hanging up there and let's get ready to install it 
before we install the brake caliper itself, we need to push the piston back into the caliper. That is why we removed the cap on the fluid reservoir because at this time when we are using our brake compression tool right here or our caliper compression tool right here, we're going to put extra uh, fluid into that reservoir. It needs somewhere to go. If that air is in there, it might trap it and cause it to not go in. You can see the piston right there pushing all the way into the caliper. If you need a brake caliper compression tool, make sure you look for a link in the description to purchase one. This one's real cheap. It's easy. I really like it, but... Make sure you use an old pad too. When you're pressing in the piston, make sure that it was an old pad. I should have said that one. Installing your caliper is just as easy as everything else. Install both of the bolts into the slider pin or through the caliper into the slider pins. These are going to be 14 millimeter, preferably six point sockets to tighten them up. I'm going to use a 3 8 torque wrench to tighten these up as well. These bolts will be torqued down to 20 foot pounds. It doesn't matter in uh, which sequence you tighten them down as long as they are just properly torqued down. You will need your crescent wrench to hold your slider pins in place when you do this process. So make sure that thing didn't go too far. Again, if this video helped you out, make sure you comment below with the year, make, model, and vehicle that this video helped you on. Because I'm sure this video is going to help others than uh, just what's in the, uh, the regular description. This is going to be pretty helpful. So get your torque wrench out. Get that torque wrench out. And let's torque these 14 millimeter bolts down to 20 foot pounds. Now that is pretty much it. I think I covered everything. Hopefully I gave you a few helpful tips through this video. Make sure you comment below with the year, make, model, vehicle, engine size, everything that you are working on that this video helped you out with. And hopefully I'll see you on the next Hopefully Helpful video. Make sure you check us out on Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, everything. Share, and I'll see you guys. Thanks for watching.